Today I was listening on my digital mobile ham radio and heard them say that there was going to be a school contact with the International Space Station and I looked at the schedule and it was only about four minutes away so I grabbed my other portable ham radio and ran out onto the porch and tuned in the International Space Station and lo and behold they were booming in and they were heading over New Hampshire and there was a guy in New Hampshire who was uh, making the contact through ham radio and he was relaying it to a school in Canada and all of the kids at the school were actually in their houses at home on their telephones and one by one they made a telephone call through to this guy on the ham radio and he connected them with the International Space Station and it all worked out very smoothly uh, except for you know there was maybe one question towards the end they had a tough time getting through but uh, everything went great and it was really awesome and they were booming in here because they were right up overhead 260 miles up and I was able to hear them all the way out uh, to Greenland so it was kinda cool it's the first time I've heard them I have talked on their repeater before um, and that's pretty cool too but this uh, talking directly to them uh, hasn't been possible lately because uh, they did a spacewalk a couple of weeks ago and they screwed up one of the coax cables or connectors they still haven't figured out what yet but what they ended up doing was using the uh, radio from the, the um, Russian module. So that's how they made this contact today, was through the Russian module. And that's a great question. It can get awful confusing up here because we go around the Earth 16 times a day. So we have 16 sunrises and sunsets. But we actually tell if it's day or night just by using our watch. And uh, when it's in the morning, we turn on the lights in the space station. And when it's at night, we turn them off. Over. Actually, the space environment is very dangerous, and one of them is the depressurization. That means we start to lose air in the capsule, and if that were to happen, one of the things we can do is we can close the hatches between the different we call modules, but they're actually rooms, and, uh, and we can seal off that leak. Over. That's an interesting question, Serene. I don't think I've seen uh, anything really frightening up here. Um, you know, one of the things that's interesting is when you look out at the Earth and you see this very thin atmosphere, and uh, you realize how precious it is that's keeping us all alive down on Earth and that uh, we need to protect it. Over. Pressure between our capsule 
the uh, space station in this little vestibule. And then once that happens, you can now open the hatches and you get to come in and give your crewmates a big hug. Over. So as you can plainly hear, this is the uh, International Space Station flying over Bartlett right now on uh, February 5th, and they're talking to a school somewhere, I'm not sure where. That's an interesting question, and I have to say, if they have been discovered, they've not told me either. Over. There is also a repeater on the space station, which I was trying to hit, but uh, unable to hit that, um, and uh, can't talk to them because they're... Uh, only talking to these kids right now. So. Oh, yeah, that is a great question, and part of it depends on how hard you're working. So if you are uh, working really hard and breathing heavy, then you're going to go through air much quicker. But in general, we can stay outside uh, about six to eight hours. Guess they thought they had lost him, but they didn't. Gonna have to look online and find out what school they're talking to. Aaliyah, that depends on how hard you're working, but in general we can stay outside the space station for about six to eight hours. Over. The International Space Station was just south of Greenland in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean at the end of this transmission and I lost his transmission at almost exactly the same time that the guy in Hollis, New Hampshire did who was the one who was facilitating this uh, transmission between the school in Canada and the uh, astronaut on the International Space Station. <laughs> 